Senator Bottomer. Uh, uh, Acting Leader, could I join with Senator Dooley in asking that we have a debate on the aviation sector? Uh, we've all been receiving emails from Aer Lingus pilots, and there is a precarious position uh, regarding Aer Lingus that I think needs to be addressed both by us as members of the Upper House, but also by government. And yesterday, Cahirlook, uh, Mr Ray Gray, the Chief Financial Officer of the Dublin Airport Authority, was before an Oireachtas Committee, where he spoke about the impact of COVID-19 in regarding the regional airports, but especially around Cork Airport, the second busiest airport in the country. And 72 million has been made available in the National Development Plan for Kerry, for Galway, for Knock, uh, but not for Cork. Um, and Cork has now no other income other than its passenger revenue and those accrued from its, its, its shops and so on, which are all closed, uh, and does not receive state financial aid, which I believe it should, Cahirok, similar to other airports. Um, passenger numbers acting leader in Cork Airport will fall to below 1 million compared to 2.6 million in 2019. And as members will know, the airport sector, and especially in the south, Cork Airport is pivotal to the economic development of the southern region from a tourist perspective, from a jobs perspective. Uh, it is important that we have a very strong aviation sector. Uh, and our aviation sector is dependent upon airlines, uh, and it's important that cognizance is taken of what Senator Dooley said regarding Aer Lingus. And I would ask you, Acting Leader, in the short term that we've available before we conclude for the recess, that the Minister with responsibility for aviation would come to the House to have a debate on the future of Aer Lingus and our airline sector, but also on our airports. Because forget about the green list, red list. We need airports when we come out of COVID-19. And I can tell you, Cahir, look, I was in Cork Airport two weeks ago, and you could hear the wind whistling against the terminal building. That's the perspective. So I would ask that the minister would come to the House as a matter of urgency. Thank you, Senator. Senator Ola. Um, can I welcome the Minister and congratulate her and uh, thank former Minister Regina Doherty and welcome the extension of the uh, pandemic unemployment uh, to April. Uh, it is about social solidarity. Uh, it is about ensuring that through the wage, employment wage subsidy scheme that is allowing for business to remain open and to open, but it's also about keeping jobs in the winter. And everything we must do is to protect people. Uh, and to create and sustain and protect employment. Uh, and that's what government is about, is about looking after businesses and workers along with the local authorities. And I'll make the point again, Minister, we must work with our banks uh, and our banks must be held to account. Um, you know, when I hear Senator Gavin, whom I have great respect for, coming in here making political speeches, uh, his was the party that hawked themselves around the country. His was the political party that hawked themselves around the country uh, rather than uh, and recruiting members rather than social solidarity with the people of Ireland. Um, and I think you in the election, by the way. I think it's important, Senator, uh, that we work collaboratively together. And the other point I would make is you were the party that had a very, you know, punch and duty approach to going to government. You really don't want to be in government at all, is the real answer. Because you can't make decisions. You can't. Is this through the chair? I understand that through the chair. And if, if well, members said, want to intervene, they can do so by giving way, but like you must observe standing orders. Sorry. Let's thank Please you, give out to Senator Gavin through the chair. Sure. Thank but you. let's let, <laughs> let's let's That's fair enough. Let's get real in here, Cahirlock. That's okay. Sinn Fein Party <laughs> come in speaking, Cahirlock. They don't want to be in government. They prefer to be out and about on social media and around the country giving out. That's their modus operandi. This government are here working to protect in social solidarity with our employers and employees. And that's what this bill is about. Can I welcome, Minister, the measure regarding the cycle to work scheme? Uh, and it's about reimagining how we in government can use travel to work, uh, and in particular the e-bike scheme. Uh, as a tax incentive, it's about encouraging. Minister, could I ask you, and I know I've written to you in regarding the community employment schemes, to allow people uh, in a variety of ages, up to the age of 60, to continue uh, on, on the, in the claw areas where there are no jobs available, where it's very difficult to replace vacancies in, on community employment schemes, uh, to maintain an open uh, policy regarding the support of these people and, and local communities. Um, Cahirlik, Pre the previous government of Senator Brock said reacted very positively in conjunction with other parties uh, in regarding a coordinated response to, to, to the 
uh, pandemic in terms of offering people work and security. Uh, I welcome your clarity, Minister, regarding the travelling abroad. Uh, I welcome the fact that there is no certainty. But I would put a question to people. If there are people who are leaving this country and not returning, are we saying it's OK to keep paying them money? I say I'm only posing a question. I want to stand today in solidarity, as other members have, with the Debenham workers, Cahirlach, who have been treated appallingly by Debenhams. These workers have been sacrificed at the altar that is COVID-19. It is wrong, it is unfair, it is unjust, and the workers in Debenhams deserve to be treated fairly uh, and deserve to have their, their, their status recognised by government. Minister, uh, Senator um, Ruan made reference to the art sector, and I won't dwell other than to support her regarding that. Um, I, I am the spokesperson on aviation, and I've met with a number of travel agents, Minister, who are asking that government would consider giving assistance to people who in good faith have paid for holidays. Now, due to COVID-19, there is rightly a restriction on, on travel to certain areas. Uh, but if the airline minister departs, these people will not gain compensation. And airlines are departing, but they're filling the planes with cargo so they can make their money either way. And I know we've created a green list and a red list, but I'm asking that a clear stance be taken by government to give a sense of security to people who have paid for their holidays in good faith, who want to abide by the green list. Uh, list uh, and, and I think it's important that we encourage people not to travel, uh, but that we ensure that they are in receipt of compensation and that the airlines or the hotels in other countries do not benefit from this misfortune. Minister, I commend you for your work. I thank you for what you're doing, uh, and I look forward to the remainder of the debate. Good morning.